We are the Panetta Brothers, Paolo, aka Bonira, and Carlo, aka 7.exe. I th I think I think since we were brothers from the start we played this game called Gran Turismo. Mm. And back a little game but back then we had designated cars to choose. And we couldn't we couldn't drive. Like he couldn't drive the RX7 in the game. We we owned the cars in the game. Yeah, so yeah, he was like you are the Supra, I'm the RX7, so he couldn't drive the Supra. But I can drive the RX-7. Our older brother had the 34, R34. Yeah. I've always liked the RX-7. Uh, 7 is my favorite number. And yeah. I got the Z because I let go of the, I let go of the dream of having the RX-7 because of how uh, unattainable it was with the prices going up due to COVID. The Z was, it just came out of nowhere. My friend got a Z and I fell in love with his, so I, I got one as well with him. Um, yeah, that's why I got the Z. <laughs> Supra, to be honest, it's as overrated as it looks. It is good looking. And of course the interior, the way it looks inside, you're the driver. It looks like a, a fighter jet in the cockpit. and. I think that's the reason why I fell in love with the inside, but also the outside curves, just it's timeless. Looks good. The most standout car is R7. I picked. I'm gonna include the Celica. I'm gonna. I, I picked the Celica because. It's been in the family for ages. My dad first had it, and then it moved to my older brother, and then he wanted to get rid of it, so I bought it as my daily. Toyotas never die. The Z, I picked it because of its iconic design, unique shape, and uh, its headlights, obviously, because Lamborghini type shit. Um, RX-7, it's an RX-7, you know what I'm saying? It's a rotary. Iconic, timeless, just beautiful. Uh, the Z is, is, like you said, it's nearing the end. The only thing I can do is probably something crazy like bags or something. Or like, uh, what's the word? Cups. I can probably do cups because bags are a little bit too expensive, uh, or a front lip as well. That's all I can do for the Z at the moment. For the RX-7, there's big plans. Um, I'm gonna go for an OEM plus sort of build. Uh, I want dish for the wheels. It is my dream car, so maybe bags. <laughs> and uh, what else? He's doing his front bar. I'm currently doing my front bar in, in the garage. I'm sure as Isaac, you can see in the video, Isaac will have a cinematic of me blocking my bar. I am a spray painter, so I'm probably going to spray paint it myself. I'm going to go original chased white solid easiest one to paint and it's the cleanest. But yeah, that's it. That's it for me. Mm. For me, still a lot to do. New wheels. Um, Turbo, but that's when I'm folds. Uh, new respray, like fresh white. Just like minor stuff just to make it look nice. Because it does look nice in the video, but I daily this and gets beat. It does does get beat, but it is what it is. But yeah, uh, pretty much just that. Then we're trying to like get both all our cards to this big event, Black Label. Yeah, just trying to work through that and it'll be just good to see our cars on shows.
Who are you? What do you drive? We'll start with that. Uh, my name is Justin De Silva and I drive a Toyota 86. Beautiful. Um, first things first, what drew you to this car? Why'd you get it? What was the, the deciding factor to picking this one up? Um, so initially when I picked up the 86, it wasn't anything actually special. Um, I had like this uh, checklist of things I wanted to uh, match, which was has to have modern safety features, has to have a massive aftermarket community, cheap to maintain, and um, it's got to look good, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's about it. Like when I was looking around, there weren't many cars that really matched that criteria. And I think I just stumbled across this car, it looked all right. And that's it. Um, so what was the most memorable moment spent with this car? Um, either driving it, modifying it, etc. The most memorable moment I had with this car is definitely when I first took it home after buying it. After working a whole year out of high school, studying and putting lots of work into just earning money, um, showing it to my mum was definitely rewarding. So you're quite young uh, and there are lots of other things that typically would be better to, uh, for a young person to save or spend money on. Why do you think that you've spent so much money on the car over, over time? Um, when I was younger, I was always somewhat drawn to cars, but um, as I grew older and studied and when I was in high school, that passion kind of died out. Um, when I was looking for space on a hard drive, I actually stumbled across my dad's MR2 Spider he used to own. Um, and the more research I did into that, the more I looked into it, the more my interest for cars suddenly exploded. Um, I would look into cars whenever I got any downtime at school, when I was studying. I would actually get in trouble for it when, during study periods, like if I'm not studying properly. Bottom line, I think they're cool and fun. Um, meeting and enjoying this hobby with my friends has been awesome. And um, as well as expanding my net networks, uh, I think it's a good hobby to do in my downtime. There are many different ways to set up a car. Your car is commonly built to handle well. However, people generally prioritize the looks. Uh, what influenced you to build your car for performance and to take it to the track eventually? It wasn't anything special when I first saw this aesthetic. It just popped up in my feed randomly. I wasn't even a fan of the big wings at first for these cars or for any cars at all. But I was really interested in like pushing a car to its limit and getting the best times possible. Um, also to add to that, I think the story behind why I went for the splitter setup was uh, I smashed my old carbon lip and I got a different style one and I was like, how can I make this look better? And the more I thought about it, like I had the splitter and the more I found myself um, drawn to perfecting how this car performs and how it looks. So it wasn't really anything special, it was just, um, I don't know, I think it looks good. Um, so my name's Chris, um, I drive a Series 1 1997 Toyota Crestar. Um, so I guess we'll start off by just asking what drew you to this car? What about it was like the... the what, what got you to buy the car? Um, so originally my first like proper like nice car that I had on my P's, I originally had a JZX 110 wagon um, and that was sort of like entry level, it was what I could afford at the time. Um, and then I ended up selling it because I lost my license and I decided that um, 
it was like a couple cars that I had in mind, but JZX 100s in particular, I was always like pretty interested in drifting. Um, I got one of my best mates, uh, Mr. Lucky from Tate, uh, introduced me into a lot of drifting stuff, and I was like, this is a platform that I want. I was like, if I could afford this thing, it's like one of my dream cars easily. Um, and yeah, so I started looking at JZX 100s. I wanted something weird, so. Um, I wasn't really looking at Cursors and Marcus too much, I was, I was looking at Cursors. So, a bit personal, but you're quite young, and obviously there are other things you can um, generically spend money on. Um, but my question is, why, why spend so much money at a young age on, on a car or like on modifying that car? What do you think it is about that? Um, it's hard to say. I mean, I'm very lucky that my parents are pretty lenient with me. They haven't like kicked me out of the house at 18 or anything. Um, also been fortunate enough to work a fair bit to be able to afford, afford a car like this. Um, I'm not too sure, to be honest. It was always just sort of like, I don't know, working on the car and stuff, it's like hard to explain, but it gives you like a feeling of purpose. Um, and it's something like just that I can look forward to. Um, yeah, I just enjoyed like having the car like so much that it's it's hard to think that I would have put my money into anything else. Um, so yeah, I definitely don't regret it or anything, but yeah. Bit of a personal one, but do you ever have any like sort of um, pushback from your parents at all about spending money on cars? Um, I, I, I had a lot of talks with my parents, they just wanted to make sure that I was doing the right thing. Um, I think they're definitely a lot happier that I went back to uni this year, because <laughs> um, I was still trying to figure out what I wanted to do, but yeah, yeah, we had a fair few conversations, but it was more just like they wanted to make sure that I knew what I was doing, not so much that they weren't happy about it, because at the end of the day, it was my money and I was working for it. Um, and as long as I was giving them rent, helping around the house, they were just like, you can do whatever you want, just make sure we're giving you a guidance, but it's harsh guidance. So yeah, they, they were on board with it though. Yeah, they enjoy it. Blue's a bit of a like interesting color as well. You don't see too many blue cars nowadays. Is there something that like caught your eye with that particular color or was it just kind of something that was available at the time? Um, I've always liked blue as a colour. I think my two favourite colours as a kid was like dark blue and dark purple. Um, I just got lucky. I mean, the AL4 colour um, for the crest is really nice colour. Um, my paint isn't too immaculate, but still. <laughs> um, I didn't. I didn't really have a chance to pick anything. There was several auto um, turbo cresters, JZX 100s for sale when I was looking for mine and they were all extremely overpriced, so I didn't even bother inspecting any of them. Um, there was a couple previously drifted ones that were semi-expensive as well, they were pretty rough. I didn't even bother looking at those either. Um, and then this was the first turbo one that I saw pop up on auction that looked half decent, because the car was pretty stock when I got it. Uh, it was completely stock. Um, R154 swap already done, and yeah, the car was like pretty clean and I saw the blue and I was like, yeah, I like this, I like this. I think I could deal with this pretty well, so. Um, I love the color, it's a really cool color. Yeah, it's not, it's not common at all. 